Hey everybody, my name is Lainey LeBlanc. And I'm Sarah Thomas. And this summer our Explore project was a comparative analysis of three different DNA collection methods in freshwater turtles. All right, so, ooh, okay. So um, safe and efficient DNA collection practices are really important in animal studies because the more handling time you have with the animal, the more stress you're putting on an animal. Um, simple techniques are good um, because it allows less experienced technicians to get quality DNA samples from animals. And then consistent protocols are essential for standardization between different animal studies. Um, so previous studies, which are um, cited at the end of the presentation, have shown that um, mouth swabbing or buckle swabbing um, is less invasive and it's easy to conduct. So the two main species that we were taking a look at were red-eared sliders and eastern musk turtles. Um, and we were taking a look at those three different DNA collection methods. And those were, as Sarah said, the mouth swab or the buckle swab, the koana swab. And the reason that we chose to swab the koana was because Dr. Javier Navarez at the vet school said that it has a higher mucus concentration, so we might have some better DNA yield there. And then finally, we had a blood sample drawn, um, and we were comparing the results of the DNA yield for those three. And this image here just shows uh, a turtle's koana. It's basically their nostrils inside of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these are the seven locations that we um, sampled uh, all over LSU's campus. Well, we sampled a lot more locations. These are the ones we used the turtles from for, um, for this study. Um, so most of them were ditches, creeks, um, some of the deeper canals we also sampled. Um, I think the only lake uh, that we sampled and had any success in was on the LSU golf course. So we had also some pretty cool cooperation with the LSU golf course. So in order to trap the turtles, we used five different types of traps depending on what the location was like and what kind of turtles we were looking for. Um, we used a combination of bait, including tuna fish, some pork organs, and frozen fish heads. Um, but we found very quickly that trapping was only effective for red-eared sliders. Um, we left these traps out for three to 12 hours, and then once we trapped from that location, we returned the turtles right after we sampled back at R&R. And thank you to Amari for the photos. <laughs> All right, so as Lainey said, we found out really quickly that red-eared sliders were the only species that were coming to, to the traps. So because our, target, our other target species was the eastern musk turtles, we had to figure out a better way to capture them because um, we needed a certain number to do. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, because we needed a certain number um, a, to have a big sample size. So um, we decided, as scientists, we were going to do a little bit of research. Um, and we found a study um, that told us that the most effective bait for catching eastern musk turtles was buffalo chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> so using this information, we bought bags of frozen buffalo chicken wings. And we tied strings to them. And we staked them out in creeks where we knew there was a large uh, population of eastern musk turtles. Um, and then as the little turtles came for their wings, we scooped them up, brought them back and sampled them, and yeah. It's not working. Okay. Um, so once we collected the turtles and brought them back to the lab or to our sample site, we took a lot of different data points. We identified the species using a field guide. We measured their weight and their carapace, or shell, length, and width. Um, and then in order to avoid recapturing turtles from the same location, if we had like, been there to sample multiple times, we used red nail polish and we painted it on the back of their shells. And we soon figured out that this was very successful. We recaptured this little guy, and we found that the red nail polish was really effective in staying on for a long period of time. And it just helped us make sure that we weren't resampling that same turtle. All right. So after we took all of those basic measurements, um, we then had to take the DNA samples. So at the beginning of the summer, with our first round of turtles, um, we brought them to the vet school, and Dr. Javier Navarez um, taught us the proper sampling and handling techniques for these turtles. So for a blood draw, um, the sampling technique was essentially pushing um, the turtle's head into the shell and down, um, and then inserting a hollow needle or a needle um, 
at an angle up towards the shell to the subcarapacial sinus um, to get the blood sample. However, as we learned very, very, very quickly, um, the mouse and the koana samples were a lot more difficult to obtain. So one set of hands needed to be holding the turtle's legs out from its body. Another set of hands needed to be holding the turtle's head away from its body. And another set of hands <laughs> <laughs> needed to be prying the turtle's mouth open and obtaining the actual swab. Um, so definitely needed between three and four people for the processing of these turtles. Um, so after we took those samples, we put them in an ice chest immediately. And then as soon as we um, were done sampling the turtles, we brought it back to the lab to stabilize the DNA. Um, we also recorded the handling times for mouth swabs and blood draws and koanas all separate. Once we were in the lab with the samples, we had to extract the DNA and then figure out how much DNA was in each sample. So in order to do the DNA extractions for the blood, we used the Kyogen DNA V spin column. And then for our mouth swabs, we followed the protocol that they came with, and it was the iCoagulate swab kit. Um, and then once we extracted the DNA out of the samples, we used the Denovix fluorescent assay um, to figure out just how much concentrated DNA was in each sample. And the reason that we use this technique is because it's a lot more sensitive than using just a simple spectrophotometer. All right. So once we had collected our, um, our data using the fluorescence uh, assay, we ran some statistical analyses on it, and we found that the koana samples had uh, significantly less DNA um, in those samples than did blood or mouth. And just like Sarah said, how we were having a lot more difficult time with the koana and the mouth swabs, we found a significant difference in the handling time for our mouth and koana swabs as compared to our blood sampling. All right. so. Um, future, studi future studies can kind of use this research when they're selecting um, sampling, um, how they're going to take their DNA samples from turtles, um, not only based on the fact that um, the blood and mouth swabs had similar um, DNA yields, but also um, based on the handling time. So if we were to make a recommendation, we would probably recommend that mouth swabs be completely, um, you know, done away with um, in your study because near the end of it, once we were getting good at it, our blood samples were taking us about 30 seconds to get, while our, our mouth and koana swabs were upwards of like one and a half to two minutes. So clearly it puts a little bit less stress on the animal if you can do it quickly and correctly. Um, in addition, we are planning to write all of this up and submit to Southeastern Naturalist, hopefully within a few months. <laughs> Throughout the Explore program, we learned a lot and had a lot of really cool takeaways from the program in general. Um, overall, we just gained a really, really good perspective as to what research looks like, whether we're in the field or in the lab, and how to work with others in research. Um, we also were able to work on those competencies that other folks have talked about um, and really gain some personal skills and strengths from that. Um, we were also able to meet so many knowledgeable faculty and graduate students that were able to help us <laughs> learn along the way, learn how to work in the lab, learn how to process turtles, just help us kind of understand what research meant when working with others. Um, and then just like the Explore program was built upon was getting us ready for those future careers, whether that's building our resume, learning how to interview, or figuring out what to wear to those interviews. Um, and then finally, we just kind of figured out that turtles are so much cuter than they <laughs> This was a little guy that we found, and he was just smaller than the palm of our hands. Just absolutely precious. Definitely gained a greater appreciation. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, this is our citations. And although we didn't actually um, do our uh, study on the soft shell turtle, we did have the good fortune of catching uh, several of them and getting to play <laughs> with these really, really weird turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Any questions? Okay.